came across an interesting couple of ideas the other day when scanning a slide-based presentation from 2016 on System Theoretic Process Analysis or STPA. So thank you William Young for noticing both problem frames and ends means, even though you skipped over the idea of intent. But, don't fret, we will fix that this session. That is, mention was made in William's pack that the STPA model actually sets up a problem frame. Problem Frames, by Michael Jackson of Open University, are a means of breaking up a design problem into smaller patterns of problem description and then of problem solutions. William just does not seem to explain how STPA relates to problem frames, so we will fix that as well this session. The problem frame behind me is relevant because it is evidence of a unified theme, that seems to pop up often. But that theme is also often obfuscated by its representation and might be hiding behind lexical and syntactic nuances used by different authors of various methods. So, there should be no surprise, that this problem frame represents the control theoretic aspect of the same control model that is the basis for STPA. That problem frame notation behind us need not be taken as the only means to sketch the frame. That notation is problem frame oriented and might itself be limiting, as notations can often be. It is some of the ideas behind problem frames that are most important here. Go figure, there is another similar viewpoint in the four variable model by Parnas and Mady, from 1995. So we seem not to have moved too far from the roots of classic requirements engineering. Indeed. The problem frame we showed earlier is actually a representation of the four variable model. To understand the correlation between problem frames and the four variable model, we can rewrite both as sequence. So for the four variable model as for the problem frame, the requirement and the world, aka nature, combined constrains the software requirement of the four variable model on the bottom line, which is the specification on the machine in the problem frame approach on the top line. The control model in STPA is actually what sets the frame when using STPA as a hazard analysis method, if not a requirements analysis method. In fact, William Slide Pack did something really interesting, when he tried to accommodate Nancy Levson's claim that STPA comes from the goal-oriented cognitive sciences by using the notion also of ends means. Now the STPA presentation of Williams pointed to a classical use of ends means over an abstraction hierarchy. A great tool in the hands of a cognitive engineering specialist. The point being made however, was more about how the control theoretic thinking was applicable over multiple layers of abstraction of the system, including the highest levels of abstraction. Something other hazard analysis techniques cannot claim, since they specialize to very narrow representations of the system. So, let's have a think. Hmm. Are there any other concepts from cognitive engineering we can draw upon? The connection STPA practitioners need to develop further is that ends means of cognitive science relates to goal intention. That same concept Levson shortens to intent, that is goal intention is the shorthand for the intent of intent specifications. The same concept Levson has not elaborated past use of the generic meaning of ends means. We'll digress a little and talk about goal intention, from the cognitive science point of view. Especially how it relates to goal-oriented requirements engineering but also how it relates to reasoning in case notations. To wit, here is goal orientation versus so-called argument or at least claim orientation. This is something we have talked about in other sessions. The intentional form of the verb is assigned to goals and the past participle form is assigned to claims. So that is the story of tense. That story of tense is, of course, most relevant to the problem of requirements and specification. The debate about goals versus claims only being a problem for case-based reasoners. So, we'll ignore the case-based reasoners except to take note that they have done a great job of exposing a vast group of engineers to goal-oriented reasoning, albeit a stunted form. 
The point being we'll be entertaining the idea of graphical intent specifications later in another session. But first let's look at the implications for the story due to goal intention, voila. Here we cheat a little and jump straight from goals, skipping the requirements to get straight to the specification in a formal notation. Eerie yes. Goal intention can be related to expressions in formal logic. Useful I would say, wouldn't you? Note the mapping of intention into both liveness and safety properties. This will give us a useful frame of reference to talk about how all of this, problem frames, STPA, ends means and goal intention all fit together into one requirements engineering model. We just want to get our heads around, firstly, the idea of a graphical spatial semi-formal causal calculus. Something that looks like this. Here we have the four goal intentions as either state or condition changes over a causal thread or a straight or condition to avoid. We see then why achieve, maintain, and cease intentions are considered to be related to the liveness property. We see how this might represent threads of execution that traverse state or condition transitions. We also see how we might cease either normally or abnormally. Abnormally where we approach a state or condition that we are to avoid. This lends itself to an interesting position, that in a propositional form, using the notion of weak release, a design is then looking for liveness that avoids unwanted states or conditions. Just for the record, while STPA practitioners do not denounce goals, they certainly do not talk of goals in any fashion resembling the concepts in goal-oriented requirements engineering. In fact, any mention of ends means as likely misses the point that ends is a euphemism for goals. We have certainly have spent time on the notion on intent aka goal intention, in a fashion that will be foreign to STPA practitioners. But where is the story going, you might ask. Well, if we look at the STPA process guide it asks for one find hazards and then two craft safety constraints. The safety constraint being an antithesis of the hazard. So, behind us the hazard represents the avoid intention on the left side, to be solved by the liveness as expressed on the right side of the design equation. STPA then asks the analyst to parse over the control theoretic model. While parsing over the control theoretic model the analyst is asked to describe the responsibilities of elements of the model towards meeting that safety constraint. That is the safety constraint acts over the control theoretic model as would the requirement and world would over the specification of the problem frame. What STPA practitioners miss then, because of their limited model of goal orientation, is the safety constraint comes from an avoidance style goal. So we need then to note that goals, when they are expressed as antitheses, aim then to constrain the liveness properties of the system. Now we will quickly look to semi-formal causal calculi as a means to specify requirements. That's not my idea mind you. That comes from York University no less. Especially one John Hall, who now operates in the problem frame community. So, here is the rub. People practicing use of problem frames denounce goals but fall into euphemisms of goal intention, at least where it relates to requirements. The idea that semi-formal calculus is a means of providing a semi-formal proof over problem frames is then gold. Gold because that rationale can be used to treat a graphical semi-formal causal calculus the same way. Now this gets us to an interesting place. Which is this. That is, trying to find that intermediate step between goals and specifications. Before we get to there, know that the problem frame community are not big on goals, that's why that opted for problems instead. It is however probably just a question of equivocation. You can also see the equivocation over the goal intention terms in the interpretation behind me in the requirements column, from York University on the topic of semi-formal causal logic. So we have shown the correlation between STPA and problem frames. We have also shown the correlation between York's concept of semi-formal causal logic and goal intention. 
I think we also have already mentioned that York's model of semi-formal causal logic acts as a semi-formal proof of the concept of problem frames. That puts us in an interesting position, where we might get to a semi-formal proof for the STPA method. So, where to now? So we will recap. We can take the system theoretic model as an analog of a problem frame concept. Now we will beef up the four variable model to a six variable model. Why? Well because it breaks the stranglehold on the idea that the problem frame world is only made up of requirements and specifications. It adds an intermediate level of system specification between the user requirements and the machine. So thank you Nelifar Fat Bunyadi. Renee Mice and Marita Heisel for breaking that stranglehold on people's thinking. So here it is. Wow, that was probably hiding there all the time. Right? So we take the problem frame model to be malleable, and probably zoomed in too closely and then obfuscating the broader application of the idea, which is what we have pointed out in other sessions. So, let's walk over the STPA procedure, but using the six variable model to explain that procedure. We know the drill so we'll race through so hold on tight. Starting with a clean slate. Remembering the STPA control theoretic model. So we'll colorize the six variable model the same way. The first steps in the STPA procedure involves analyzing for accidents and then refine that to hazards. The next step is to restate the hazard as its antithesis in one or more safety constraints. Finally define a set of responsibilities that aim to ensure the safety constraints are satisfied. At the bottom right we notice we have also added what STPA practitioners refer to as an unsafe control action. A full model, covering the span of what an STPA procedure would look at, is then also easily depicted. Now, for the record, if we go back a slide we get to an interesting position. An interesting position since we then have trouble telling safety analysis apart from rigorous semi-formal approach to requirements analysis interesting. Right? We just consider states and conditions that we don't want to reach, Hazards are then simply one type of unwanted condition or state of the system. And now we found there is nothing special about safety analysis. We already know the STPA community is converging on that idea, at least from the position of system qualities. You may recognize some of the steps. I have proposed an STPA dependability and security model, as of 2019, as it was intuitive that the community would converge on that, eventually. The idea for STPA dependability and security is really based on work by Algerd Achevizienis, Jean-Claude Lapri, Brian Randall, and Carl Landwehr and their taxonomy of dependable and secure computing. The dependability and security model feeds into the various flavors of STPA pre-2019 thus. I thought it just needed a little tidying up so here it is, intuitive right? Now why is this trend relevant? Well system qualities are the new way of saying non-functional requirement. Eliciting of non-functional requirements being the problem goal-oriented requirements engineering aimed to solve. So, we still need to bring this back to goal-oriented concepts. Understanding the correlation between problem frames and the four variable model, we can map it to goal intention this way. That is, use the best parts of both theories. If you pay attention to requirements engineering literature, a little touch of deontic logic also does not go astray. Deontic logic, based upon the notion of obligation, goes really well with goal intention. So that's the idea of obligatory, omissible, and impermissible. Of course, we broke the juju on the idea of limiting our model, to only requirements and specification. But should we reject goals, given the evidence? Probably not, since we get a solid model to meld all three ideas together. That is refinement over multiple levels of abstraction, over all the goal intention types. 
so if the goals include avoidance goals related to safety, then the rationale acts as proof of satisfaction of those goals. That proof of satisfaction is what case-based reasoners call a justification. This is otherwise the inverse of the ends means Levson claims is the basis for intent specifications, since justification is simply means ends. It does not hurt at all that this also works with the idea of refinement via bisimulation by observation which covers the ideas of causal logics, state transitions, and process algebra. So it now seems that the coup de grace is that the solved by relationship of case notations is a euphemism for the cognitive science and therefore goal-oriented notion of ends means. So a graphical notation that can capture this reasoning may be a means to build assurance reasoning into requirements and preliminary design. Which is, or at least was, the goal of phase safety cases. So what if all this could then be done in a goal-oriented requirement engineering notation?